welcome back to my channel back with a video on GNU radio now uh, I've been making videos on SDR hardware previously uh, but this video is going to be all about GNU radio you know what guys I found uh, probably the easiest way to make your own block I mean people already probably knew it but I just find out that uh, this is probably the easiest way you can make your own blocks in GNU Radio Companion. And all and the key is is a block called embedded Python block. Alright, so I was just playing around with that. And uh, let me just walk you through with the uh, uh, with the flow graph. Now here's the thing. When you compile GNU Radio Companion, it comes with some core uh, core blocks which are under like for example this this peak detect, rationally sample and things like that and then you also when you compile them together you will also get some out of tree modules these out of tree modules what they are basically people who have made blocks of GNU radio for their own purpose and they probably left it on Get github repositories and then you can simply download them or compile them or if they come pre-compiled in GNU radio new version of GNU radio before you have to download them together download them and you have to pre-compile uh, you have to compile them and that would become that would show up on your GNU video like this. Now, uh, in order for you to make these blocks, I mean it's a very long process. I mean, uh, when you, when you want to make these out of free modules, or when you want to make your own blocks, I mean, when you want to make your own block. Let's say I want to make a block that just takes a signal and multiply it together, and we already have a block for that. Let's say let's take a simplest block that you want to take a signal in and then multiply it. With some and uh, give give it some type of an amplification factor, and then you just want to increase the signal uh, amplitude. I mean, when you were, this was a hard process because I tried making a block my, for myself, and it was quite hard. I mean, you have to go through, go to GNU Radio, go to GitHub, and then you have to look for it. There are different codes because most of these blocks that you see on GNU Radio, they are compiled on C++, right? And, and it has a wrapper of Python. Now, there's a block called Python block. All right, let me just simply, so there's a block called Python, and just simply drag and drop this block. Once you open up this block, let's say for example, the one that I already have here, I'll show you that, this is the block. Now, go to open an editor, and this is where you're gonna write your own code. I mean, whatever you want this particular embedded Python block to do, you can write your code in Python. You don't have to worry about writing it in C++ anymore. Just simply go ahead and just simply write it here in these blocks, and it works perfectly fine. So, for example, if you want to make a, like this example that they, they, they have given in this block is basically a simple multiply constant block, all right? You don't need to worry about uh, uh, touching this. All you need to do is taking an input and multiplying it by whatever that factor is going to be, which is going to be your example underscore parameter. You can just call it a multiplication factor, whatever it is. That's by default. They, they just made that block for you so you can play around with this. So you don't have to worry about coding it in C++ and then uh, and then, then you have to compiling it again and again. And, and it's a tedious process. I, 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 at least it was for me. So now this block is actually taking a signal and uh, just multiplying it by this example parameter. So let me show you how you put it together. Just take I'm taking a signal source here, and and this embedded Python block, I have given it some parameter. Let's say I, you know what I want to put a slider. I'm gonna call it an um, mul, some multiplication factor, and I'm gonna bring my Qt range block. And uh, this QT range block, where is it? It's right here. And let me just zoom in. And I want to call it mul. I want to have a default value of 1. I want to start off from 1. And you know what? I want to go all the way up to 50. Let's go in an increment of 2. Apply. OK. And that's it. So, so now this block. Uh, the code behind it is actually take an input signal and multiply it by this example underscore parameter. So basically this block is now acting as a multiplier block or sort of like an amplifier block. Now when you run this, you know what, this is 
I found it to be really cool because you don't have to worry about combining it yourself now. So here we go. I have a QT sync. It's better to look at it in time going. So for example, your default value is about one. And now when you start increasing it, so it's just simply, here we go, you're at two. So, so the next value is going to be three. Then in an increment of two, five, six, seven, 20. Let's go to 30, 31. Let me get some value that is like even value. 45, so you are somewhere around 45 and, and 50. So there you there you have it. You you're somewhere around 50 volts. So basically, it's, this block is helping you to make make this block act as whatever block you want, and make that part of the thing. Now this is probably the easiest way you can do it. Now based on this, what I know, uh, there is another flow graph that I made. So let me just disable this and let me enable the rest of. Now, here, there's another block, same block, you just the code that is there um, is basically taking, so everything remains as is, nothing changes because this will show up, this is basically the class and, and, and related to C++ and things like that. The, the change where you have to make is basically here. So basically what it's doing, it's actually taking an input as a string and converting it into a byte. Basically, that's what this block is doing. And let me show you the output of this. So you can just code it to make this block perform whatever task that you want to perform. Once you have this, since I'm taking a message in, that's why I'm using a message uh, edit box. I'm taking a string. This block right here, which is you can just program it. Just simply click here, open an editor, just change the code a little bit, make this block handle whatever it want whatever task you wanted to for it to do and just simply take this message in which is in the form of a string convert it in a form of a byte and just print it out in a message debug block now you might be thinking why the heck you have null source you have throttle source and you have throttle and why you have your null sync it's just there to avoid congestion uh, so my CPU does not like you know overrun this even though I, if I were not to put it there you don't have to let me just disable this as a as well so basically you're taking a string converting it in a byte form and you're displaying the message using a simple embedded python block so when i run this you will get that message there is no audio hardware is connected now let me type in my name Mohammed. and here we go so basically it has taken my name which is and converted it into a byte because every string is being treated every every character in my name is being treated by a 8 bit and i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 i have 16 bytes but i'm seeing 17 bytes why because it's also counting this as a byte as well the space itself that's why you're getting this 20 20 is the representation of when you take a string and convert it to an ascii 8 bit it's all converting that into that that space is actually 20. you can also see this if i were to just play this graph again and uh, let me just write down my name without a space and here we go now i have 16 bytes so the space is also being counted as an 8-bit um, integer value so so i really like this idea of having an embedded python block and then you can use that to program it you can program that block using python you don't have to worry about programming it in c plus plus and then you can make this block act as whatever you want so I hope you like the small tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.